once again to our show that is called Real Shame. It's a show where we watch movies from our movie list of shame or movie blind spot. I'm Adam. I'm Andy. And this week we're watching two movies that I've never seen. Have you seen any of them? Yes, I've seen both of these. He's seen both of them, but I have not, and that's why we're watching it. And you know what it is because you can see the title and you are literate, probably, <laughs> I would say. So uh, let's go into it. The first movie we're reviewing today is going to be... A gangster who is on the cusp of testifying against the mob is killed, and the cop who was supposed to protect him sets out to find the killer. Steve McQueen is on the right side of the law this time as Lieutenant Frank Bullet. We're going to expose the organization. I read your speech. Why San Francisco? Ross is safer here. That's your province. Keeping him out of reach for 40 hours. Where? The Hotel Daniels, 226 Embarcadero Road, room 634. He's there now, expecting you. So now that you know where my house is, Lieutenant, I hope that we'll get to see a lot more of each other, particularly in view of the investigation. A senatorial hearing has a way of catapulting everyone involved into the public eye, with subsequent effect on one's career. It'll be a pleasure to have you along. Have him in court on Monday, Frank. So Bullet was directed by Peter Yates. Peter Yates was an Englishman who had directed only movies and things like that. In the, I think some movies yeah. and television in the UK. This was his first American film, but he would go on to direct movies like The Hot Rock, which is a cool little 70s heist movie with Robert Redford, The Friends of Eddie Coyle with Robert Mitchum, Breaking Away. And the 80s, early 80s sci-fi cult classic, Krull. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if he's any relation to David Yates? I have no idea. I don't right. know who David Yates is. He's the guy who directed the last few Harry Potter movies and uh, and also the um, Fantastic Beast movies. Oh, uh, well, may, maybe son. Uh, yeah, maybe. Grandson. I don't know. Cousin. I was just curious. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll have to look that up. Written by, uh, the, screen, uh, the screenplay is written by Alan Trussman. He wrote... Another movie that came out in 1968 that also stars Steve McQueen called The Thomas Crown Affair. Foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, he also wrote an, uh, a, the sequel to In the Heat of the Night, They Call Me Mr. Tibbs with Sidney Poitier. They the screenplay me. was also co-written by a guy named Harry Kleiner who did work on screenplays like Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Belushi. Classic. Yeah, it is classic. Uh, Bullet was based on a 1963 novel called Mute. Mute Witness by a guy named Robert Pike was the guy's name. I think the alias he wrote under for the book was Robert Fish. Oh, I'm sorry. I got that I got that backwards. His name's Robert Fish. He wrote the book under the alias Robert Pike. I guess he just didn't like that last name, so he had to no. change it. Guess not. So Bullet stars Steve McQueen as Lieutenant Frank Bullet. We've seen Steve McQueen. Say, sorry. What? I was going to say Pike's a type of fish, so that makes sense. Hey, there you go. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so we saw him in We, we saw him Magnificent in Magnificent Seven, Seven which was and awesome. in The Great Escape. So yeah. we've seen him in a couple of things. And he was a big star already at this point. He had done the television show Wanted Dead or Alive. He'd been in plenty of movies like The Magnificent Seven and The Great Escape. So he was no stranger to audiences. He's also, the king of cool. He is the king of cool. I keep interrupting you today. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. He, uh, also no stranger to audiences is Robert Vaughn, who we also saw in The Magnificent Seven and the movie that we paired with it, Battle Beyond the Stars. Yep. Robert Vaughn plays Walter Chalmers. Then you've got Don Gordon, who plays Del Getty. Simon Oakland, who plays Captain Bennett. Jacqueline Bissett, the lovely Jacqueline Bissett, plays Steve McQueen's girlfriend in the movie, Kathy. Robert Duvall even has yeah, a small awesome. role. As a cabbie named Weisberg. Almost as small as Jacqueline D D Bassett. Yeah, yeah. She, I feel like she's, <laughs> she's not in it a whole lot. You've got Mr. Roper himself, Norman Fell, as Captain Baker. And speaking of sitcoms, in a very, very small part, even smaller than Robert Duvall and smaller than Jacqueline Bassett, Vic Tabak, who was Mel on the TV show Alice. He ran Mel's Diner. He's also in the movie Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, directed by Martin Scorsese. He plays Pete Ross, who is the brother of the mobster that's supposed to testify, Johnny Ross. So he's like in the very first five minutes of the yeah. movie, and that's it. You never see him again. But he's in there. Okay, so this is a movie that I've seen. I know I've, I've seen it before all the way through, and I feel like I might have seen it again all the way through. But it's I, like I've seen bits and pieces of it. 
on TV, yeah, and yeah. the car chase and everything over the years. But it's a movie that you have never seen. Never seen. We decided to to watch it this week, so I'll just let you dive right into it. I, I obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you knew that it had a, a car chase, yeah. like a, a famous car chase. I think that's the thing that's like part of the pop- popular zeitgeist, yeah. right? Is is the the Mustang, right? I think it's like a 350 fastback. You know, it's from... They talk about in Gone Six Seconds, you know, that's Eleanor, what Nick Cage is looking for. I don't know if the original one was looking for a car similar to that or not. I haven't seen it. But, you know, Eleanor, that fastback Mustang is very sought after, didn't make a whole lot, looked very cool. Very cool car. Uh, and, yeah, knew about the car chase and stuff like that. And, honestly, I expected more car chases, right? Like, I, I thought this was, like, a car chase movie, like The Vanishing and stuff like that where it was going to be – more car chases, but it was, you really only had the one, I felt like. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah. I, I, yeah. One. But it's pretty long. Yeah, it's, it's pretty like long. Over 10 minutes, I believe. I think it's cool, like the car, I mean, like, not to get into it too much, but I think the car chase is really cool, and then, like, there's some parts that sped up, and sometimes you're like, uh, this car looks very dangerous, like, uh-huh. when it whips around and it goes towards, like, that, that ravine or whatever, uh-huh. like, I was like, ooh, that's... That's a little scary. Yeah. And then, like, it's interesting how they cut for the other car to go in the gas station and the gas station explode. Like, it's interesting, like, how they made that uh, happen on screen, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I actually, I really, I, I enjoyed this movie. I thought this movie was really good. I, I I think, you know, you know, I think it showcases Steve McQueen really well in it. I think he, he, he to me, he comes off, he, he reads better. And this is kind of talking about what we're talking about Wednesday. I think he reads better as like a rough and tumble kind of guy rather than a suave kind of guy, right? Like, it kind of reminds me a little bit. And again, let's talk about the movie we're going to talk about Wednesday. Like, when you think about Bond actors, you think of like, this Bond actor was good at portraying this aspect of Bond. This actor is good at playing this other aspect of Bond, right? Mm -hmm. So I think he's like more of like a Daniel Craig kind of Bond, maybe because they're both blonde, but more like a rough and tumble kind of, uh, like roguish, like not 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 polished or finesse kind of guy, right? So I think he reads that well. He reads well in those kind of parts. So I think that's why I really liked him, Magnificent Seven, and and you know, in Bullet, it's just like he kind of, it, to me, he reads like that kind of character. And so, um, yeah, I really liked it. I liked the twist in the movie. Obviously, you know, on these Monday episodes, we we spoil it, but I like that. You know, um, Jimmy Ross, I think is the J- Johnny Ross. Johnny Ross. Uh, is the uh you know the the guy they thought was him didn't turn out to be him and then yeah. I thought and so he took the other guy's identity and all that kind of stuff like I thought that was an interesting twist and stuff like that I do think some of the stuff towards the end gets a little bit long in the tooth like I just wanted to kind of like speed up and ramp up a little bit and kind of close a little bit faster and like the pace to speed up a little bit but that's kind of picking hairs but overall I uh, I enjoyed it I really liked watching Bullet. Good deal. So, um, you said you've seen this before. You've seen bits and pieces. So, what do you remember? Bits and pieces. I felt like I said that weird. <laughs> uh, so, what do you remember about Bullet before you watched it? And what do you think about it this time around? Uh, I It's funny because I, I felt like I remembered a lot of it. But I forgot about kind of the twist. I forgot yeah, yeah. about what happens there. I remember the guy getting shot. Johnny Ross gets shot. Or what you think is Johnny yeah, Ross yeah. gets shot. As they're trying to protect him, because obviously the kind of the movie's kind of built on that. You know, he's supposed to protect this guy. They fail for whatever. Yeah. You know, they fail because the guy opens the door for the, the killers, basically. <laughs> yeah, but they fail to protect him. And I remember Robert Vaughn being very kind of slimy and smarmy. You yeah. know, uh, being a but he wasn't like he wasn't like on, on the take or anything. Like he yeah, was he's, like a, a, he's not. Uh, it's it. so yeah, yeah. when as I was watching it, I was I was misremembering. I was thinking he was kind of behind yeah, yeah, it yeah. all, or, or you know, was at least part yeah. of it. But yeah, he's he's not part of it. So that was surprising to me. But yeah, I had complete. I guess it's been a long time since I've seen it. I had completely forgotten about you know kind of basically the 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 part of the movie after the car chase. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, forgot yeah. kind of what happened after that. So it was fun to see that. But as I started it, I. I don't think I've ever realized just how cool that opening sequence is when the credits. I love the credit sequence. Oh, yeah, In fact, I watched it twice. Oh, yeah. Like I was like this because the music is really cool. So the soundtrack is done by Lalo Schifrin, 
who did like the Mission Impossible. I mean, he's done a bunch of movies, but yeah. he's he's still alive. He's like ninety something, but he did the Mission Impossible theme, which of course bam, everybody bam, knows. Bam, 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 uh, but bam. he's like a he was a jazz musician. I mean, he is a jazz musician, and so his score is like really jazzy and cool. Yeah. And yeah, the credits are just awesome. And the words like, like hollow out, and it's like a yeah, scene and then, and then, the and then, then you see like the next scene coming yeah. in through the as as. as but I, yeah, it's just I was like, man. This movie really is cool. Yeah, they don't do it, credits like that anymore. They don't. And so the credit, the title sequence was done by a guy named Pablo Ferro, who did the other Steve McQueen movie in 1968, The Thomas Crown Affair. Foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, yeah, he did the he did the credit sequence for, for both of them. But yeah, I, I think the credit sequence is really cool. I think the movie's really cool. I think obviously Steve McQueen is very cool. He is the king of cool. Yeah. And yeah, the, I think the car chase, I mean, I'm sure there had been maybe some like little dinky car chases before this, but this, this one's has like out out, the yeah. car chase. Like this is a really good, and those, those are awesome cars. As you said, yeah, like yeah. the Ford Mustang is cool. The, the green Ford Mustang that Stephen Queen drives the Dodge charger that the, the, the two killers are driving. And the guy that's driving the Dodge charger is a guy named Bill Hickman. He, I only know him as an actor because I've seen the French connection like a million times yeah, yeah. and he plays a part in that movie. But what I didn't realize is he's like a big time stuntman, oh, and he's actually doing the driving why, yeah. for the Dodge Charger. Yeah, Do so I, he, I didn't realize that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Steve McQueen did some of his own driving for yeah. the car chase, like in the close up scenes, because Steve McQueen was very into auto racing. He was. And, yeah. I mean, into all kinds of stuff. In fact, in the Thomas Crown Affair, he drives like a dune buggy all over the place. <laughs> yeah. uh, which you know, again, we, we might see that soon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Steve McQueen did some of his own driving, but you know, he let the professional stuntmen do the really, really dangerous stuff. Yeah. And what I read was the guy. So there's the guy that's riding on the motorcycle that you know c- kind of does the slide on the motorcycle. Yeah, that's the guy that did the stunt when Steve McQueen jumps the fence on the motorcycle in oh. Grand Escape. He was his stunt double. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, so I thought that was really cool. But yeah. The car chase is not the only thing good about this movie. I mean, I think it's it's well paced. Uh, I mean, as you said, I mean, I think Jacqueline Bissett is kind of maybe kind of wasted. She doesn't have like yeah. huge parts of play. You kind of you see. I think she's in two scenes. Yeah, she she's not in a, she's not in a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but I think the movie moves very well. It's not super exciting, especially by action movies of today's standards but i don't think that that matters because i still think that it moves well enough you are interested in what's happening you do want to find out especially you've never seen it before like you you do want to find out what the hell is going on here okay so this their witness died who's behind it and then as you said there's a twist because you find out wait that wasn't actually the guy after all so now what's going to happen so i feel like most movies when the witnesses die it's like the end (laughs) yeah right right, (laughs) right. it's like oh no we have a Half a movie left. Or, or you know, they, they die, and then it's like, okay, now we're just out to catch the killers. But yeah. then he basically catches the killers. They blow up in a gas yeah, station, yeah. and then there's even more to the yeah, movie. Yeah, he yeah. goes to find out that, oh, my God, you know, the, the guy basically faked his own death in yeah. a way, you know, and now he's going to – he's bound for what they think. I, th- I think initially they think it's Rome, but then he jumps on a plane to London. But – and that's another thing. I got a lot of heat vibes at the end yeah. because he's kind of chasing him across – the San Francisco airfield. Yeah, airport. and there's and there's all this stuff too where I'm like, if he's on the plane, I'm like, nowadays he like he couldn't have a gun on him. No, oh, I thought the same oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he they, had they a must gun. have been very lax with yeah, their security. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. got the gun on him because yeah. when he jumps off the plane, suddenly he's got a gun. Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. firing it at Steve McQueen. Yeah, that would never yeah, happen yeah, today. Yeah. But I guess back in 1968, you know, it's like they they scan your your bag and they're like, oh, you got a gun. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, did they you even know? have X rays back like, then? Long, I guess they had to have X rays. But yeah, so that's that's. I'm glad you said that because I, this movie. You know me, I love kind of realism, and I feel like they get a lot of stuff right as far as the police procedural thing. And one thing that I was impressed with is they basically have like a little fax machine almost (laughs) because they've got like those photos that they they come across. Like he puts the phone on the little receiver and and stuff like that. I was like, wow, they had stuff like that even back then. (laughs) then, It's very primitive looking, but still it's cool. Well, especially with the movie on like Wednesday because you go through like an office and it's just like... Oh yeah, this is how things were with before yeah. computers existed and stuff yep. like that. You know, you see these little teletype machines. Yeah, it's like, that, oh okay, that's that's what life is like. The stock market tickers and stuff. Yeah, it's, but it's 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 very cool. Yeah, I think this movie's it still holds up for me today. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a it's a really really nice action film. Although again, 
if you're used to kind of the action films that we watch nowadays, it's not going to be as, maybe as thrilling or as fast paced, but I don't think that that matters. I think Steve McQueen is awesome. I think, I think everybody's awesome in the yeah. movie. Uh, and like you said, it's, it's cool to see Robert Duvall, even though it's in a, a small cabby yeah. cabby role, For but sure. yeah, this is a good movie. I'm glad you liked it. I still like it. Great film. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, 100% and, agree. although we, we just spoiled it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> spoiled the twist, but, uh, so it was nominated for two Oscars at the Academy Awards that year. It was nominated for best sound. It lost to the musical Oliver, Okay. but it did win for best editing. So that's cool. And again, the car chase, I know I was reading, it took them a while to, to kind of film all that. You know, I don't remember exactly what the time frame was. And then they kind of cut it all together. And, of course, there's there's some continuity issues yeah, yeah. in it. Like, I think 20 hubcaps fall off the Dodge <laughs> Charger. I swear. Like, it, it seems like every scene, like, a hubcap is rolling yeah, off yeah. the Dodge Charger. But who cares? I mean, it's still, it's cool because it's San Francisco. Yeah. You know, they're going up and down the hills and stuff like that. It's just a really, really cool movie. I think uh, it was uh, when we watched baby driver i think that was edgar wright kind of used bullet and movies yeah. of the silk as like a you know a thing to look at and kind of build off of for his car scenes which i, I think it. we both thought baby driver the car stunt was awesome oh yeah work was awesome yeah. too so. I, I i i still when i watch that movie i get kind of goosebumps when they're yeah you know chasing each other around yeah it's very very cool Bullet was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry in 2007, and it is currently streaming right now on HBO Max. That's where I watched it. If, that's where I watched it, too. If you have HBO Max, it is 98% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. That's very high. 85% audience. Roger Ebert gives it four out of four stars. Couldn't find Gene Siskel's print review of it. Of course, I, I never can find Gene Siskel's print reviews, because this is well before Siskel and Ebert had a show, and Leonard Maltin gives it three and a half out of four stars. So all around, everybody likes it. We like it. Critics like it. Check it out check if it you out. haven't seen it. Or check it out again if you have seen it because yeah. it's a great film. Awesome. I agree. All right. So. All right. So on these Monday episodes, we always like to talk about what we've been watching. Um, I'm going to kick it over to you. What have you been watching? Two movies that start with A. One of them is a horror film. Well, actually, they, they mo both might could be viewed as horror <laughs> films because it's certainly horrific what happens in the second film. The first movie is Antlers. Do you okay. remember seeing the preview for this? I vaguely remember seeing the preview for I, this. I think we saw it a couple of times when we went to the draft house. It seems like forever ago. It seems yeah. like it was like five years ago. Well, and, yeah. and I think it, it, it did. The previews for it were shown very early. And I think COVID and lots of other things kicked it down the road some. Yeah. So it finally came out, I think, I guess in theaters, but I watched it on, I don't know, some streaming service. I don't even remember. Uh, it is a big letdown. This is a horror film about the Wendigo, which I'm cool with that because there's not a whole lot of horror movies about, about Wendigos, Wendigo, yeah. although I can I can think of some. But it's always nice to see, It's you know, because it's not a zombie film Wendigo. or something like that. Uh, but I didn't care for it. it. It's just, it's slow. It's very anticlimactic just not it's not terrible like it's it's watchable but yeah, it's yeah. just it's a slog and it's boring and i didn't care for it the other movie that i was going to mention is a documentary that i saw on showtime which is nominated for an academy award this year which is why i watched it it is called attica about mm. the attica prison uprising that attica. happened in the early attica. 70s yeah uh and it is extremely good and i i I like these kinds of documentaries. I mean, not for their subject matter, because the subject matter is awful, like especially what happened to the guys at the Attica prison. But I like them because they have interviews with a lot of guys that were there, a lot mm -hmm. of guys that were prisoners, and those guys are getting up there in years. So I think it's important to make documentaries like this before those people pass away. Capture. Get, get it straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, and these guys are very articulate, and they talk about in graphic detail what happened, you know, basically once the riot was squashed, yeah. you know, and when the cops came in and, and the guards came in and just basically treated them less than human. I mean, it's, it, it will make you mad when you watch this. I guarantee you, uh, you'll be pissed off at the, 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 the treatment that they received, but the documentary is very well put together. And again, because you have interviews with a, a lot of these prisoners and other, not just prisoners, but you have people that were brought in to negotiate and, and stuff like that. So you have a lot of people that were there and can speak directly to the events that happened. I think it's a, an ex excellent documentary. I haven't seen the other documentaries that have been nominated, so I don't know how it stacks up and I don't know yeah. like what the favorite is to win the documentary, but I think Attica is an excellent documentary. If you have Showtime, 
it is currently streaming on Showtime. So check it, check it out. Although again, beware, beware. It's kind of a brutal watch. Cause again, there's footage of, you know, atrocities and dead people and things like that. So just be warned. Gotcha. What about you? Sounds cool. I want to check that out. Yeah, um, it's good. Uh, so for me, I actually went on a um, a kick of I just forgot the, I just forgot the guy's name. Uh, I went on an Aaron Sorkin kick this week. Okay. So uh, I watched three movies by Aaron Sorkin. We watched Moneyball, which I like. I think the more I watch it, the more I like it. I'm not, and I I don't think I like it for the merits of the movie itself. I like it because I like the idea and like you know, using statistics and all that stuff in baseball. Like I find that so fascinating, that subject matter that you just, you know, even though the movie has a glimpse into it, I find that pretty interesting and all that kind of stuff. And have you seen Moneyball? Do you I know? have. And, and I agree with you. I, I think all that stuff is very yeah. fascinating. Yeah. So the movie's good. It's not great. It's not bad. It, you know, Brad Pitt does a good job and everything like that. But the, the idea behind it, the, the statistics and all that kind of stuff, I found pretty interesting. The other movie I watched was actually yeah I watched uh, Steve Jobs not Jobs because Steve Jobs was written by Aaron Sorkin and directed by Danny Boyle. Jobs was the one starring Ashton Kutcher that I don't remember who 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 uh, who, who wrote or directed it. So we watched Steve Jobs and uh, I, you know it's I, it's the second time I've watched it since it came out. And I remember being kind of disappointed with it when it came out. It just wasn't you know. I, it wasn't I it wasn't to the hype that I uh, that I thought it was gonna be I, I was kind of hyped for it because I think that was like you know Aaron Sorkin like becoming like Aaron Sorkin and people knowing the name and stuff like that and uh, you know Danny Boyle does a good job directing it I know they went through a bunch of different directors on that one and you know it's it's good it's not my favorite but it's 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 good I guess so Michael Fassbender plays Michael Fassbender. Steve Jobs so who would win. Would Michael Fassbender, Steve Jobs, win in a fight against Ashton Kutcher, Steve Jobs? Who do you think would win? Oh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I, I don't. Jobs I, versus Jobs. Yeah, I think Fassbender. I wouldn't want to fight Fassbender no matter what. I mean, he's like he's very intense. Magneto intense. Yeah, he's, he's very intense guy. David from Prometheus. I think he would do some stuff, but yeah. I do think Ashton Kutcher looks more like Steve Jobs, especially in that movie than than Michael Fassbender looks like him. I haven't seen either one of those movies. The only movie that I've seen which has Steve Jobs as a principal character is Pirates, Pirates of, of Silicon, Silicon Valley. Valley. Yeah, and I like Noah, that one. Noah Wiley yeah, as yeah, yeah. Steve Jobs and Anthony Michael Hall as yeah. Bill Gates. That's the only movie that I've seen. Yeah, I remember liking that too. Yeah. Uh, long, long time ago. But uh, in the vein of Jobs, I watched a movie that was nominated for the Academy Awards and one that you saw... <laughs> Uh, and I don't think the movie itself is nominated. It's the actors are nominated. The actors, yeah. And that's Being the Ricardos. It's another one of his, like, I think he kind of does these behind-the-scenes kind of movies because I feel like Steve Jobs is, like, leading up and behind the scenes of these three major milestone presentations he does. And then Being the Ricardos is, like, this one week inside the writer's studio or writer's room and filming uh, the I Love Lucy episode when – some news came out about Lucy and they're trying to deal with the fallout and all that, all that kind of stuff. And I don't, I don't want to really want to spoil what the news is, but, yeah, but yeah. I mean, if you know history, you know what it is. And I feel like, like I did with the, with the trial of Chicago seven, I'm just, I was really disappointed in being the Ricardos. And it seems like this movie would be like catnip for me because I love like inside the writer's room, like how the sausage is made, all these kind of movies, and and even though we do get a glimpse of the writers' room and that and the writers are writing it and and glimpse into making the show, I just I would think that would elevate my opinion of the movie, but it doesn't. It, it, it it's not. It it just feels like it's trying for too much. It just doesn't feel cohesive, and it's just I don't think it's that interesting of a story or it's told that interesting. Like I think. Narratively, it sounds like an interesting story, but I don't think it comes across as interesting at all. I don't feel any of the stakes that's going on with Lucy. Like, I don't feel like, I don't know. I just, it just didn't work for me. And, uh, you know, I just found Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem really, um, they, 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 they took me out of the movie, man. Like I couldn't, I couldn't believe them as their roles. I don't know if it's because I know, the, you know, Lucille Ball and, uh, was it, uh, Desi, Desi Arnaz, Desi Arnaz, like, so well because I've seen like I Love Lucy 
probably throughout my whole lifetime and stuff like that. Yeah. And they look so different if that's what it is or, or what, but it's just like, I don't, I don't know. I just never, I never really found anything to grasp onto the movie and, and like the movie. Um, but what, remind me, what do you think about the movie overall? Uh, I, I, I couldn't disagree with you more. Okay. <laughs> I, I really like being the Ricardos. Uh, I, I think, I just think Aaron Sorgan is a great writer I and, and, and yeah. I really like, I, I think it's very, the movie's very cohesive and very interesting to me. I do agree with you. I don't think Javier Bardem or, or Nicole Kidman look a thing yeah. like either one of them, Desi Arnaz or Lucille Ball. And I do wish that they would have gotten somebody who did look like, or made yeah, them up look better to look more like them. Well, because, they made yeah, up they do Nicole. Look, they look very strange, yeah. especially Nicole Kidman. Yeah, they made up Nicole strange. Kidman, and it they, looks they did. weird. Yeah, it, it looks, looks weird. Uh, it's, that would be my biggest gripe. But other than that, just having to, to look at them look weird, uh, I really was fascinated by the film. I, I thought it was very, very interesting. But then again, I also like The Trials of Chicago 7, and you did not like yeah. it. So, I, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I like this... This later stage Sorkin, yeah. and, and and you're not, you're not with. Him. I mean, I like. I think the. I just don't think I like mm-hmm. him as a director. I, mean, I like Molly's Game, which he wrote and directed, mm-hmm. but I feel like Molly's Game is more akin to like, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, some of his earlier works and stuff like that, and not really like the like Charles Chicago Seven and yeah. being the Ricardos. But yeah, I was I was really let down. I mean, I'll say I, I like being the Ricardos better than the Trials of Chicago Seven. Yeah, honestly, so that was better. That's kind of where I am. I'm, I'm, I was kind of disappointed. I, I don't, I don't see, I don't see it. But you know, that happens a lot. I, <laughs> I don't think either one of them should win. Yeah, the best actor or best actress. Honestly, I think there's there's better people in both of those categories to me. For sure. But I, I mean, I, again, I thought they did fine, but I nothing really stood out to me. And I, I, J.K. Simmons is also. No, yeah. I don't remember who he's up against, but I mean, he was, he was okay. He's a cranky, yeah. he's a cranky drunk old man. Or whatever, yeah, JK, so. yeah. I mean, he's awesome in yeah. anything. Yeah. So he's solid, but yeah, I liked him as a cranky old man and, and, uh, as Fre- Fre- Fred, Fred and yeah. Or yeah, it's the, Fre- it's, character's the character's name is Fred. Fred yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. The neighbor. All right. So that's what I've been watching. Some, um, Sorkin movies, some good, some not good in my opinion, but that's what happens. All right, so that was Bullet and what we've been watching. So let us know what you think of Bullet down below. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment or shoot us an email, realshame at gmail.com. That's where we answer viewer questions that are sent to us, realshame at gmail.com. Please like, subscribe, share, do all that social media stuff with the episode. It really does help spread the word, and we do appreciate it. And stay tuned. Oh, what are we watching on Wednesday? I forgot yeah, to ask so you. We, we've already done some foreshadowing, some heavy, heavy foreshadowing for this movie. But Steve McQueen did two movies in 1968. This was the one that came out second. There was a movie that came, this came out in October. There's a movie that came out, I think, in June of 1968. Stars Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway. And you might have heard of it or seen the remake, at least. Yeah. It's called The Thomas Crown Affair. Imagine that. Yeah. So stay tuned Wednesday when we watch The Thomas Crown Affair. And we say yes we support thievery or no we we don't <laughs> even if you're bored you'll have to find you'll out you'll have to find out on wednesday uh thank you guys for watching we'll see you wednesday with the tom scrum <laughs>